What's up guys, I'm Random Frank P. Today we're going to check out the Daz X40 gaming keyboard. And while Daz is more known for their professional lineup of keyboards out there, they do have this new gaming series and the X40 is their first step in that direction. I'm actually overall pretty torn about how I feel about this, so make sure you stick around to the end so you can decide. My first impression was aggressive, considering that geometric faceplate design, and honestly that grey and black color theme wasn't doing much for me. Thankfully they do sell different colored and themed plates that you can buy separately, and for this review they threw in a red and black striker top panel which I think is much better looking, and it fits in nicely with the red LED lighting. Switching panels is very simple, all you have to do is use the included hex wrench to loosen the 8 screws, and then swap it out as you pleased. They do sell a few different panels like the orange and black fox panel, a green striker panel in an olive color, the defamer panel in mustard, and the two I already showed off. It should be noted these panels are sold separately so they're not included for free and they cost 30 bucks a pop. As for the construction, it's made very nicely and feels extremely solid. There is zero flex here due to that metal panel. But this is your typical 104 key layout here, with things like the Windows lock key, the LED brightness, your media controls, and others being located on the front side of the F keys accessed by the function button. On the left side of the keyboard you have 5 macro buttons which are always a nice addition, and the macros can be easily recorded by pressing function F12. There is no software here for the X40, so having that onboard memory for recording your macros makes it nice and easy. Underneath the keyboard you have some rubber pads to prevent scratching your desktop, plus 2 feet on the top to elevate its backside for a more ergonomic experience when gaming or typing. This is pretty much standard nowadays, and I feel like I've said that sentence a hundred times before. Then on the back side of the keyboard you have the always welcomed USB pad pass-through for plugging in things like your mouse or a flash drive, and you have a headphone and microphone input. I do want to note the USB pass-through is 2.0, not 3.0 speed, so that's pretty head-scratching. And then lastly, before we move on, this cable is a monster. It is very thickly braided and breaks out into two USB plugs if you do choose to use the pass-through, and it actually wouldn't fit through my cutout on my desk, so it is just very large and bulky. Unfortunately, the second I opened this out of the box, the cable right near the keyboard was already starting to fray. Not too sure why, and I reached out to some of my friends who have reviewed this keyboard before, they had that same experience, and that's a bummer. Now let's take a look under the key. They do include a keycap puller. When you pop it off, you'll see the red LED light and their new Alpha Zulu gaming switch, which was designed by Daz themselves. These keys are very buttery smooth. I am definitely a fan of that. And they actually feel pretty similar to reds actually, or at least in my opinion. They have an actuation force of 45 grams, a full travel distance of four millimeters, and a tactile force of 55 grams. I found these very enjoyable to type on and gaming felt pleasing on my fingers if that makes any sense. They are just very, very smooth. Here's a sound test so you can hear how these yellow Alpha Zulu switches sound. Then like I mentioned earlier, we do have red LED backlighting here. It's very simple, there are no lighting effects or animations. On the function row, you can only adjust its brightness. Now the red lights do fit in with this keyboard, but honestly, if you had any other top panel like the mustard or olive color designs, those red lights would not fit in at all. And honestly, that's a good point to conclude here for the Daz X40 keyboard. Where does this fit in? I don't mind the red lights and the no RGB capabilities, honestly, that's fine with me. But just the price point of 130 is kind of much for the limited overall capabilities and lighting we're getting here. Plus the top panels, they're an extra 30 bucks. So if you don't like that gray and black stock one they give you, you'll be dishing out some more money just to customize its appearance. In the end, it's just in an awkward spot in this market, and it's really hard to fault them either, because this is really like their first gaming product launch, so it's a whole new field for them, you know, you gotta test the waters first with this, and I think it's just in this awkward goth, like, teenager phase right now. But like I said, the keyboard is made very nicely, uh, there's definitely room for potential here, which is always a good sign, and I am just a really big fan of how smooth these yellow Alpha Zulu switches are, they did a great job on those. But in the end, the decision is yours, what do you think about the X40 keyboard? Let me know down below on some changes and improvements you would kind of, you know, recommend to Daz for their next gaming keyboard launch, just want to hear your guys' feedback. 
I'll put the link in the description down below so you can check out this keyboard to find out some further information on it if you're interested. If you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up to show your support. Feel free to follow me on Twitter at randomfrankp. Last, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Well, I'm Random Frank P. Hope you enjoyed. Have a good day.